Now let's look at another way we can keep things square. So I'll go back and draw this shape again. Now I'm going to look at this square on, so I'll go back to the front view, so I'm looking at it square. Now in this case I'll go and add one horizontal constraint, but then I'd like to square this up and create a rectangle. So I can go up to the perpendicular constraint, so I'd like this to be perpendicular to this, this to be perpendicular to this, this to be perpendicular to this. And so now I've squared that up. Now if I go out and draw another line, say just here, and I'd like to create a parallel constraint. So I'll go to parallel and I would like this line to be parallel to this line. But I didn't want it to jump up there, I wanted it to stay down here. I'm going to hit undo. So I want the line to stay lower. And so I'm going to go up here to the lock constraint. Click on lock and say I don't want this end to move. So get the end point and you'll see it adds this little nail constraint. So now if I go and want to move this line, I can move that end back or forth. But the other end will not move because it's nailed down. Now if I go back and say I would like this line to be parallel with this line, what happens? Can I still move this line if I go and touch on that line? Now this axis is in the way a little here. So how do I turn that off? I simply go over here to the feature tree and click on base. And see how that toggles that on and off? Now again I'd like to move this line, click on the end. Why won't that line move? I cannot move it. I can move it out and make it longer or shorter but I cannot move that line. And the reason is because I have this little plus constraint right down here. So that's maintaining this at horizontal, so this stays horizontal because of the 90 degree angles. This is coplanar. Now if I go and delete this I just have to click on the plus sign or I can just box pick and hit delete. Now that's not constrained. So now if I go back and click on that line and grab that endpoint. I can rotate that line and the shape comes with it. Now there's one last constraint we haven't looked at and that is collinear. So if I go up here and draw a couple of lines, just let's make some lines that are a bit uh, just all over the place here. And I'll make them individual. Now if I go to the collinear I say I'd like this to be collinear to this. I would like this to be collinear to this. And also maybe I would like this to be parallel to this. And so now if I go and grab this line again, because I said to make those parallel and collinear, you can see how those stay. They always stay in a straight line. That's collinear they'll always stay parallel also. I'm just going to pan this over out of the way a little. And one other interesting point with the horizontal vertical constraint, I'm just going to draw a couple of lines here. And I'd like to make both these lines vertical. So I go to the horizontal vertical constraint, make this go vertical, click on it, make this go vertical. Wait, I wanted that to go vertical. Why did it go horizontal? So what's happening here? The lines are lazy. They go to the closest place. This is closer to vertical. This is closer to horizontal. And so that's where they'll go. Click on this, it's closer to vertical. Click on this, it's closer to horizontal. 